More Heart Than Talent Radio. More Heart Than Talent Radio is brought to you today by my Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle Coaching Program. If you find yourself struggling to find your breakthrough and frustrated with your results, join my Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle Coaching Program. It's a private video coaching call every other week where I'll be teaching the skill of the week followed by coaching. JCIC members one-on-one live for observation. All calls are recorded and posted in the JCIC members area. Members will have access to the private JCIC Facebook group where they can ask questions, interact with me, my Golden Mastermind team, the other JCIC members, and receive any support required in their breakthrough process. When you enroll, you'll receive the new members welcome kit which includes my new Breakthrough Factor audio program, my Breakthrough Accelerator course, my digital coaching program, and so much more, all for $197. This is no ordinary coaching program. Sign up now to begin your breakthrough process now. Go to goldenmastermind.com forward slash circle to get started today. Jeffrey Combs, weekend of Thanksgiving, a great weekend to be grateful. The Pilgrims, the 1600s, a, a weekend of feasting. See the 22nd, that would be today is Tuesday, February 20th, 2018. And just so I'm clear, Chris Shar, this is a Facebook, no, this is a Zoom call, correct? As Facebook is having challenges, the GMS team, which today is comprised of Richard and Chris have put together this Zoom call for us today, live, so we'll be coming to you here. Normally, it is on Facebook Live, but we are improvising, adapting, and adjusting. So we have a great content for you today, and much gratitude for all of you on today's live, who have been my clients, customers, who followed me over the years. So I'm going to move right into the inspirational portion of today's live, but first, a couple of quick announcements. December 1st, I'll be in Saddlebrook, New Jersey with my exceptional client and friend, Diane Hunt. So Diane, I'm just honored to be your your friend and coach, so looking forward to it, and your exceptional husband, Jib. So I'll see you there on December 1st, and then December 22nd, I'll be in Terrytown, New York. That'll be Saddlebrook, December 1st, New Jersey, Terrytown, New York, December 22nd. December 29th, I'll be in Los Angeles, California. In the middle of the month, December 15th, Atlanta, Georgia, and that will wrap up the calendar year 2018. It'll be the end of the era, so that will be what a great year this is, a reinvention year for many of you, and a year of transformation and change, and a year of consciousness. If you are looking for some direct insight, also considering hiring me to be your coach, I offer free 20-minute coaching sessions. used to be 15-minute, but now they're 20, 25 minutes so you can receive the full value of what a coaching experience would feel like. And also on Black Friday weekend, I'm offering a 20-hour plus coaching package. If you're an existing client, you can contact me on Facebook and then look for the GMS promotions that go out later this week. We always do a Black Friday. We'll be selling a lot of our downloads in a very, very large value. So Large value, small price point. So watch that coming up near the end of the week. Chris Shar, who is the straw that stirs the drink in the GMS back office, has put together a great value for you. He and Carolyn Olson, I want to thank both of them for task well done. Let's move into the inspirational portion of today's live. Now, if you, you can tell that I have the juice today, the DNA. I have it every day, but today I feel even more juiced to deliver the juice. The, the, the edge, that slight edge. Now, if you don't have that edge, that means that you're more than likely in anxiety, fear, and doubt. And that edge is not anger-driven. That edge is passion-driven. But if you do have anger issues, you can transform that anger into passion. You can turn that passion into a result, that result into a lifestyle. And what you're selling, whatever you're branding or what you're marketing, it's lifestyle marketing, lifestyle branding, because in essence, what you're delivering is the good life. And that's the life here and now. And you were not meant to struggle. If you've been waving that flag, noble struggler. Strugglers hit parade, plant it here, and move on. Move into your present, move into your future, and let go of your past, the pain of regret. 
Now today's call is emotional agility. Great, now that once again, that's great content. The transform the transformative power of letting go. Now, I consider myself a self-proclaimed expert on the topic of letting go. Letting go is a very misunderstood two words, very misunderstood topic. But what letting go means is my ability, that's yours, I, I, my, my ability to separate feelings from the past, separating feelings from events. And as you become skilled at the separation of your feelings from the events, then you are no longer the mind-body connection to the events that shape your feelings. In 1998, groundbreaking content was delivered by the great John Bradshaw on PBS. I was one year into my first year of sobriety, and I'm watching John Bradshaw as he's delivering content from the book, Healing Your Inner Child, followed or was preceded by the book, Coming Home. Bradshaw was also a predecessor with Louise Hay at the same time. She had brought out the book, You Can Heal Your Life. And that's where I first heard the term mind-body connections. And you're able to separate your feelings from the events that create these mind-body connections, and you're not the dis-ease that keep, you keep perpetuating over and over to live in anxiety, fear, and doubt. Now, letting go is a skill. Letting go is an art, and letting go becomes a reflex. Letting go is not this, not these words. It's not H-O-W, do I. This is very common. It's not a how do I. Letting go is an I am state. It's an I am state of consciousness where I am letting go. Is it that easy? It, that, well, it depends on your perception. Letting go is a skill. It, the, the degree of easiness is determined by the way you communicate with yourself. Now, the way a lot of people communicate is they, they communicate with this word hard, difficult, difficult, and then they struggle. So I'm going to show you these three words. Here's hard, difficult, and struggle. A large percent of society are hard-aholics. That's hard with a hyphen A, with a hyphen holic, hard-aholic. A large percent of society are noble strugglers. They continue to struggle every single day. It's so hard. It's arduous. Oh, it's difficult. And that's the way they communicate. And then a large percent of society's communication style in a sentence structure is filled with terms like guess, kinda, sorta. And they finish sentences by saying, I don't know, I don't know. And anyway, 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 I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And I, I, I encounter this with a lot of people that, that I prospect. They say, I'd really like to hire you, but. And what many people do is they want to tell a story about their, their grief, their suffering, their abandonment, their rejection. And then they edify it by talking about how hard and difficult it is. Well, that, in that type of situation, you can't transform and you can't change. You cannot be and stay in recovery when you're an addict. If you drank last night and you planned not to drink that day, well, that means that your suppressed feelings expose your emotions that are unresolved. Now, there's a difference between repression and suppression. Repression is here in my left hand. Repression is when you don't understand. You tell yourself you don't know. You don't remember. You don't remember your childhood. Your whole childhood was a blur. The, your teenage years were like a blur. You don't remember, and then you continue to live out the same situation over and over. That's repression. That typically is because it is so painful the experience that you went through that you have wanted to forget about it. And by forgetting it, you repressed it. You pressed it down. Now, suppression is when you continue to do the same thing over and over. It's a good intention with a poor delivery. I intend to go to the gym. I wanted to go to the gym. I was going to go to the gym today. Today was the day that I was going to stop eating sugar. I promised myself, but by 10 o'clock, I had the sugar blues. I relapsed before I even made it to noon. I promised myself I wouldn't eat a bag of chips, but I ate the whole bag. I went into the lunch break room, and oh, my God, I took a salad, but everyone else was eating candy bars, and I relapsed also so I could experience what are called sugar blues. That's a sugar spike. It means a very high high followed by a low low. That's pleasure for pain, the might miss out syndrome. Fear of missing out, FMO, that's what many people do, is they relapse emotionally, their body runs their brain, and they don't know how to or why they can't let go. Letting go is a skill practiced daily. It started by a breath cycle. 
so that you start to develop a, sh a longer breath cycle. Now, most people's breath cycle is very short. That's a short breath cycle. Now, long breath cycle is a lot longer. It's like this, meaning that a longer breath cycle is you breathe in, down into your abdomen, bring it back up, and create a release. What that does for the brain, it releases neurons that wire and fire that are based on familiar feelings that are unresolved, that are repressed and suppressed. So does that mean all I have to do is just breathe? I've had people just breathe like the song by Faith Hill in 2002. No, there's, there's more to it than that. But a longer breath cycle oxygenates the brain. It also gives you more energy, more qigong, gives your energy down in your abdomen where your second brain is in your gut. It connects your body and your brain together so you become one with rather than separate from. When you hold on to events that are unresolved, you'll end up crying daily. You'll attract your reality, people and situations to fulfill your feelings of abandonment, rejection, low self-esteem, grief and apathy, anger, hate, resentment, guilt and shame. And those emotions are what comprise anxiety, fear and doubt. And when you live in anxiety, fear, and doubt, you're always putting off the later. I'm going to get clean and sober tomorrow. I promise I won't drink tomorrow. After Thanksgiving. Now, it's amazing how many people are already planning to gorge themselves. Pack it on. They're going to fill their plate. They're going to have their relatives. And they're going to have red wine and white wine and rosé wine. They're going to have turkey, beef, pot roast. They're going to have four different kinds of baked potatoes, mashed potatoes. Sweet potatoes, French fries, and they're going to have cranberry sauce. They're going to have stuffing. They're going to stuff themselves with stuffing and finish it all with pumpkin pie, with whipped cream, and wonder, WTF, why do I do this to myself? Because your brain is oxygenating, with, and it's, you're oxygenating your brain with a future tense relapse before it even happens because you're salivating what it's going to feel like for that instant gratification, for that, for that plain for that pain pleasure syndrome and that's what so many people do this this holiday do your best not to stuff yourself pack it on let go of your anxiety about outcomes before you get there and be prepared for people to criticize you is that all you're going to eat you eat like a bird i can't believe that's all you're eating don't let people guilt you into submission let go letting go is a skill now letting me go doesn't mean you don't care about everyone else, but it means you begin to detach yourself from outcomes that aren't favorable. You begin to detach yourself from situations that tend to send you into relapses. You're able to separate your feelings from the events that shape them. That is what letting go means. Now, the skill of letting go, there's a routine to it. And once you start to master the routine, it becomes a routine. It does require effort. It does require practice. It's not hard. It's not difficult. It's not arduous. It's perception. The way you perceive the situation to be will determine your outcome. But if you continue to overwhelm yourself before you start, now you're overwhelmed. I ask many of my top tier clients, I go, I will go, Diane, what do you do when you get overwhelmed? And then Diane will say, Jeff, I don't get overwhelmed. Because getting overwhelmed is, is control. Because many people worry about getting overwhelmed, they get overwhelmed before they even get overwhelmed because they're already overwhelmed. And that's being in control of being out of control of the control you're controlling. That's what many people do, is they confuse control with command. I'm in control. Actually, your objective is to let go of control. Control is your worry about future events that haven't happened. I want to control this. I want to make sure this happens. I want to say the right thing. And this is why many people have challenges prospecting because they can't, they're, they're worried about the outcome. They're worried about making a mistake, getting in trouble, saying the wrong thing, alienating someone, being, being rejected, being abandoned, all the situations that most of society continues to perpetuate over and over so they can stay neurochemically addicted to a set of feelings about outcomes that haven't happened based on unresolved issues. An unresolved issue are events from the past that the brain holds on to and gives it meaning. And the degree of meaning or the picture that you hold on to of the way you hold on to an event determines whether it's pleasure or pain. And when you can separate your feelings from the facts, the facts are you were traumatized, but that doesn't mean you have to live a traumatic life. The facts are you grew up in an alcoholic family, but that doesn't mean you're an alcoholic. The facts are that your father left the family at an early age and a lot of situations happened to you that weren't favorable. Those are facts, but in the present, 
the facts only count if you give them matter. And the degree of matter matters to whether it's pleasure or pain. And when you move into a state of pleasure, bliss, joy, love, that's called consciousness. Consciousness is understanding. It's awareness. It's knowing. And it's trust. And as you elevate yourself into that state of being, you're letting go of anxiety, fear, and doubt. Yes, Jeff, that sounds really good. But how do I do that? It's not a how-do. It's an I am state. I am focused today on being and staying in recovery. I will not criticize myself one time before I go to bed at midnight. Oh, I have a long way to go. Actually, it's midnight. I say this all the time to my clients. Oh, it's going to be a long, difficult journey. It's midnight. Midnight's the only thing that matters because that's the end of the era. That's the end of today. You're given a gift at midnight tonight, 86,400 seconds, 1,440 minutes, one hour, one 24-hour period, master your emotions for one day and duplicate it. That's the duplication process. You're not in control of your emotions. When you control your emotions, you're out of control because you're trying to control what isn't controllable. Consciousness doesn't recognize control. Consciousness does not recognize right and wrong. Consciousness is not black and white. It doesn't win or lose. Consciousness is love. And as you begin to love self, have regard for self, love who you're being, love your country, love mankind, love your significant other, love people in your influence. As you begin to exhibit that love, it's transmutable. And that transmutation creates an energy. And that energy becomes spirituality. And that type of spirituality is infectious, meaning people want to be a part of what you're doing. They find you interesting. They find you attractive. They find you, they find you admirable. They find qualities in you that you start to feel in yourself. But if you don't feel these in self, then you will continue to hold on to the same set of situations that perpetuate your addictions. Now, as you begin to understand that letting go is a skill practiced daily by understanding the cause that creates the effect, why you do what you do, and you don't duplicate poor performances. You duplicate effective performances. Then you get beyond performing, you're no longer performing. You're effective daily, meaning you don't relapse, you don't get overwhelmed, you don't perpetuate the same set of circumstances and the same feelings over and over to create the same outcome. Now let's take a look at the seven points here to emotional agility. Now agile means flexible, that's what it means. Agile means flexibility. Flexibility is also synonymous with a reflex. It means that you're not rigid, you're flexible, you're in a flow state. You're able to drop the putt in the hole. You're able to NBN, nothing but net. You do a backflip with ease. It means you're agile. You've done enough yoga, you know from the stretching, Pilates, exercise. You have flexibility in your joints, in your muscles, in your movements, but now you want to start to have flexibility in your motions. If you're rigid, if you're uptight, that's anxiety. And it's that uptightness that creates the inflexibility that creates the outcome that you don't want to create, that you create to fulfill your feelings of disappointment. But as you begin to become agile in your emotional emotions, means you're flexible. You're able to adapt and adjust as you understand, know, are aware, and trust. That's consciousness. Consciousness constantly adapts to the situation. That is called a, a, ref, a reflex, also a response. But when you're reactive, when you're reacting to the stimulus, you're recreating the same situation over and over to fulfill a familiar feeling. And as you're no longer the mind-body connection to these events, then you are you and you are free. And it's that freedom of choice and freedom of feeling that allows you to separate yourself from your anxieties. I'm in so much fear. I'm so overwhelmed. I don't know how I'm going to get through the holidays. I'm so worried. I, I, I coached a couple of my clients today. They tell me, oh my God, I'm so overwhelmed about the holidays. And I said, well, why have you subjected yourself to this? And they go, huh? So when I ask these questions of people, I, well, what, why are you, why'd you volunteer for this? Well, I'm supposed to. You're supposed to be guilty. You're supposed to be guilty. You're expected to be guilty. Well, I have so much to do. Well, why'd you take on this task? Because I'm, I'm, I'm. See, many people don't even understand why they do this themselves. They do it because it's familiar. Well, I have so much cooking to do. Well, did you ever consider going to a restaurant? 
Did you ever decide, ever consider dining with your husband, wife, significant other? You're not obligated to overwhelm yourself, but there, there's so much, there, there, there's so much control that so many people trap themselves into that they don't, they can't consider another way of life unless being overwhelmed. So how do I let go of being overwhelmed? Number one, by recognizing it. If you can't recognize where you are and why you do what you do, and you're the mind-body connection to the event, you'll perpetuate the same set of circumstances and feelings over and over to fulfill a neurochemical craving you're emotionally addicted to, anxiety, fear, doubt. Cortisol consumption means your body will be in a state of flow of cortisol and fight or flight all day long where your body runs your brain. Now, you own a business or you think you own a business or you tell yourself you own a business, so what you really have is a hobby. And what you really are is a poser. You're telling yourself you're going to close the sale, but you pose as that. You show up to, clo to close, but you end up posing because you have so much anxiety about the outcome. I don't want them to think. I don't want to be judged. I'm going to be rejected. I don't like the word no. This is how your monkey brain races, the reptilian brain that sees lions and tigers. All it is is a story. When you begin to let go of the story about the outcome that hasn't happened, you will start to understand that your opponent is your ego. That's opponent number one. The second opponent is your prospect because your prospect is not on your team until you, until you enroll them. Your prospect is not on your team until you close the transaction. Your prospect oftentimes is your adversary. They're your opponent. They're the other team. You're seeking to create win-win situations. Oftentimes, your prospect has objections. They're not telling you no. They're telling you they're not buying. They're telling you you're not interested. Now, when you start to understand this, you won't waste your time on non-qualified prospects, non-qualified buyers. You will let go of your anxiety about outcomes that haven't happened, specifically on being rejected. When someone tells you, that they're not interested, or they'll get back with you, or they'll think about it, they're giving themselves a reason not to commit. And when you understand that, you'll ask a couple of commitment questions, and if the outcome isn't favorable, you will easily and effortlessly let go. And you won't stalk this prospect, you won't follow up with them, you won't waste your time on a non-qualified buyer. Yeah, but Jeff, I heard that I'm supposed to call people seven times. I have to do all this dripping. Well, there's merit to that. In certain internet marketing campaigns, there are a series of emails, drip letters that go out, a series of correspondences, and we check and see what our open rate is, and see these situations have merit. When you communicate with people personally, perhaps the timing isn't right, but it's not your, it's not your responsibility to determine what's right for them. And you can call back 400 times, but you better not waste your time with people who aren't qualified buyers. What you've done is waste your most valuable commodity time. You want to devote your time and energy where there's a payoff that's favorable, not a payoff that's disappointable. And as you begin to let go of the cause that creates the effect, then you will move into a state of consciousness where you will understand, you will know, you'll be aware, and you trust the outcome. You trust yourself. That's intuition. Intuition means intuit. It means that you understand. You, are, you know. You're aware. And you're able to easily and effortlessly let go. Now, letting go, once again, letting go is my ability to separate my feelings from events that created them. So if, I'm, if I feel rejection, and rejection is a very common emotion. I don't like to be rejected. I don't like the word no. I don't want to ask them out on a date. I'm afraid I'm going to be rejected. I don't want to pick the telephone up because what are my friends going to think? My friends are going to think I'm a flake. I don't want to try. I don't want anyone to think I'm trying to sell them something. This is, how, this once again, this is, this is communication of anxiety based on unresolved issues. Sales is the highest paid profession in the world. Buy into it. Get out of this, this mode where I don't want to be a salesperson. So when you say that and you're selling products, services, and goods, it becomes very contradictory. Your objective is to be a top-tier sales professional. Your objective is to become very skilled and master the art of selling. It's mastering the art of moving products, goods, and services from one shelf to someone else's shelf and money moving that comes into your bank account for a value proposition, for your service, any multitude of situations. Break this down so there's an ease in the process, not a, not a degree of difficulty. If you continue to create the situation that's difficult, you're going to be inflexible, you're going to be in fight or flight, you're going to be overwhelmed. What am I holding on to? That becomes the question of the day for so many of you. What am I holding on to? Well, Obviously, it's the past. That's the big picture. 
but inside that bigger picture are the events you hold on to. Well, I don't know what they are. I do. In a very short period of time, if I'm your coach, I can break down the cause and effect very effectively. I'll look at the details and the events of your life. I'll ask you questions, but you can ask the same questions. That means you evaluate self in a place called metacognition. You're able to see a situation for what it is. You're able to evaluate the situation for what it is without criticizing yourself. You don't criticize your parents, your brother, your sister. You take a look at your perpetrators and violators. You understand that this, these are the events that shape my feelings, and you're able to look at it in, in a state of objectivity where you can easily and effectively let go. You don't hold other people responsible for your habits, good and bad. You don't hold other people responsible for your feelings. You're, not, you're no longer a victim. You don't attract the same situation over and over to fulfill the same set of feelings that keep you in anxiety, fear, and doubt. You begin the practice of letting go. Letting go is an energy. It's a separation. It's a non-physical. It's not linear. Letting go has no shape. It has no form. Letting go walks into anywhere in the world and you can let go of any anger. You don't personalize the situation. You don't walk straight to the food table and eat because you're anxious about the outcome that hasn't happened. You don't go straight to the bar and have a double doers, Scott, eight-year-old Scotch. You don't have a double doers or 12-year-old Glenn Fittich or Glenn Livett to take the edge off. You don't go right up to the bar and order a triple kettle one with a splash of cranberry juice because you're so overwhelmed about the outcome that hasn't happened. You don't order a dirty martini because you don't require that to take the edge off because there's no longer an edge because you have let go. Letting go is a skill practiced daily by taking a breath, having a better understanding, awareness, knowing, and trusting self to not make mistakes, get in trouble, and all the other situations and stories you tell yourself, you, be, you become a recovering storyteller, and you understand why you don't let go. You don't let go because it would change your identity. You don't let go because there's a payoff. An addict has the biggest challenge understanding the payoff. And if you don't understand the payoff, you'll continue to perpetuate the same situation over and over to create the same outcome. Letting go of the past, well, once again, letting go of the past is a separation of the past, meaning that you're not the mind-body connection to that past. Now, I had three seniors when I was a freshman put me through a hazing incident. I repress these feelings until later in my life. I no longer hold these three boys who became men responsible for some of my feelings of rage and anger. I have forgiven them and the situation, and I don't hold anyone responsible for the violations I've experienced. I've also practiced forgiveness for self for all the trans, all the transgressions, the DUIs, the public humiliation, the intoxications, the blackouts, and all the things I've done as an addict that I do remember, that I am, that I am able to recall. And the things I've repressed, I still, I still bring some of them up and let them go easily and effortlessly without criticizing self. And I don't hold on to shame. You can do the same situation. I did events that are shameful, but I'm not going to hold on to the shame of the event, even though the events were, were not favorable. And I've hurt people that I've asked forgiveness for, and some of them haven't forgiven me, and some of them have. And I'm not responsible for other people's feelings. I'm responsible for my actions and my feelings. And as you begin to move into that state of recovery, you are recovering. <clears throat> and recovery as a constant state of consciousness. And in that state of consciousness, you're always improving. You're reading new books, you're reading new content, you're breaking new ground, you're elevating your consciousness, you're attracting your reality, people and situations that you can foster change with. You start to live life with a zest, with fun. You're not tired, overwhelmed, and exhausted. I mean, this weekend, I cannot wait for this weekend. I have something so awesome planned. But I just, I'm, I'm salivating for it. I'm not overwhelmed, but I'm loving it. It's a holiday, baby. It's, for, it's, it's Thanksgiving. It's a time of gratitude. Move into it. And the holidays coming up, I mean, every day is a holiday when you live life on your terms and your time frame. I mean, I, I, I live in Northern California, in one of those beautiful areas of the country where it's sunny year round. I mean, I love it. I live here by design. I'm free of all debt. You could be too if you do what I did, own a business and practice this simple discipline one day at a time, empowering self and others. That's what allow you to set yourself free. That gives you, that gives you the good life. I mean, you're, we're here to live a good life, not a life of struggle. 
Now, this isn't airy fairy. These are facts. I'm not a black and white person. I am a Capricorn, but I'm not black and white. I understand life is gray, but there's certain situations that require tenacity, content, repetition, experience, improvement, in reciprocity, prosperity, and other situations that you bring to the table that fosters goodness and brings people to your reality. Cause, meaning, and purpose. When you become cause per and driven purpose, people feel you and a whole different set situation shows up. You let go of your abandonment issues. You let go of your rejection issues. You put it behind you and you look forward. You don't look over your shoulder all the time. Oh my God, the past is catching up with me. Well, there is no separation with the past when you live in it. When you can separate your feelings from the past, you are you and you are free. Jeffrey Combs, president and founder, Golden Mastermind Seminars Incorporated. And wrapping up the Zoom Live today, gratitude from the center of my heart for you for being a first, first class rock star client. And those of you who know, you know who I'm talking about. I, I want you to know how much I love all of you. It's Thanksgiving weekend. I want to thank my man, Chris Shar. This is Chris right here. Chris and I have been together and going on nine years, baby. And I love my team, Carolyn Olson, Alec Friel, Richard, Ray, and David Harris. So thank all of you. Have a great afternoon. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you for listening to the More Heart Than Talent radio. If you enjoyed today's content and would like more insight and education to the breakthrough process, you can get my new Breakthrough Factor audio training for free today. It's seven hours of breakthrough content to assist you to break through in life and business. This training is currently for sale on my website for $497, but I'm giving it to you for free as a bonus to persuade you to try my new coaching program called the Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle. It's my proven system to teach everyday people and entrepreneurs how to break through to success. When you join the Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle, you will participate in two private video coaching calls per month that you and my other members receive access to. On each call, the first half, I'll be teaching the skill of the week and giving you an assignment related to the topic. You will have the opportunity to post your homework in my private JCIC Facebook group. The Facebook group is a place where you can interact with me, my Golden Mastermind team, and other JCIC members. On the second half of the coaching call, I'll be coaching JCIC members one-on-one -on -one live for you to observe. As a member, you can register for your own live one-on-one -on -one coaching session during this call. They're all recorded and posted in the JCIC members area for you to review while you are an active member. You will also receive a new members welcome kit in my new Breakthrough Factor audio program, absolutely free for joining. You can sign up today for just $197. This is no ordinary coaching program. Sign up now to begin your breakthrough process now. Go to goldenmastermind.com forward slash circle to get started today.